Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and welcome to this video. This is actually part two of Iaido, Iaido Jutsu versus Bato Jutsu. So if you've not seen part one, best thing to do is go back and see part one, simply because you'll get up to date then. Right guys, I had a great response from that video and what I mean by great response is there was a lot of conversation built up and uh, some people agreed, some people disagreed, that's absolutely fine. I want you to remember, purely remember that I... I consider my job role uh, part in the samurai community to start asking questions about the things we don't know. I don't necessarily say I do know, that's not what I'm saying. What I want to do is come along and say, okay, that doesn't seem right. From a logical point of view, that just does not seem right. Let's have a look at this closer. Uh, the last video was actually started because a gentleman emailed me and said, what's the difference? So I had a quick look into it and I made the video. So. In the last few days since it was put up, um, Miyako has been, uh, so Miyako is my Japanese native speaker, so the translations of the words before were from native Japanese speakers who were very, very knowledgeable on uh, military tactics and military things. Um, so if you wonder where the translations are from, they're all from native Japanese people. One of them has a degree in um, linguistics and translation and is also published off from military warfare so the translations are fine so what you so what miyako has been doing miyako is another one of my helpers and uh, she's been going through all the online forums in japanese now please remember what i'm about to tell you is based on information from students of iaido iajutsu batojutsu on the internet in Japanese. So these same questions have been asked, because nobody really knows the answer, these same questions have been asked in Japanese by the Japanese and people who study in Koryu. So she has gone through like Yahoo Answers, she's gone through blogs, she's gone through um, people's websites just to find out. And she says in on the whole, the last video did was absolutely the same as what they think. Um, so, but we've added a few things. Now, these are from those blogs, Yahoo Answers, Japanese students of Kenjutsu and Iaijutsu and Iaido and Batojutsu, etc. And they have said, this is the general feel in the Japanese online samurai community, is they think that Iai or be Iaido or Iaijutsu is to go into a sword fight with your sword in the scabbard. That is, you're either straight away you go to kill or you're there, you know it's going to kick off but um, your sword is in the scabbard. Somebody attacks and you respond or you want to kill instantly and draw and kill. So the idea is EI, B-E-I Do, EI Jutsu is about the sword being in the scabbard and, and they say it doesn't matter to whether you sit down or stand up. It was literally practiced in both because the point is it's when you found yourself with sword in scabbard. Now Tachiai, what we were speaking about before, um, the online Japanese community are saying that that is when you come to a confrontation where your sword is drawn. So two people look at each other, they draw their swords and go to fight. That is a Tachiai fight, not an EI fight where you literally, EI is in the scabbard, Tachiai is where you've drawn and you prepare and you move up to each other or you take a Kamai. So just, did you get that? EI Jutsu, according to the online community, is you respond to an attack or you attack someone directly from the scabbard and you kill. Um, whereas Tachiai is you respond to someone's aggressive behaviour by drawing your sword and preparing and moving up and striking together. That's Tachiai. So, um, and again, it doesn't matter if it's sitting or standing for the AI. Uh, right, the Bato Jutsu. Now, Bato Jutsu and Iai Jutsu is very difficult because most people, the question is what's the difference? And most people agree that it's pretty much the same thing. But in the last video, I said it was my theory that uh, Bato Jutsu came just below, oh, man and Yoshi, sorry, we were discussing it. Bato Jutsu came just below I, Iai Jutsu and it was like, sort of subsidiary and uh, uh, Miyako went off searching again on these things and she says that's pretty much what the online community think as well and the fact that now get this right please don't misquote me here some people think it is absolutely interchangeable EI Jutsu, Bato Jutsu same thing they think totally the same some people now this is some people not me some Japanese people in the online Koryu community think that Bato Jutsu is to draw your sword and cut with one strike. So that's from the scabbard, draw and kill. Whereas Ei Jutsu is to draw your sword, 
come back and then make the strike. That very small difference of draw and cut at the same time versus draw and strike. This opens a big, big area that needs to be studied. How many Iaido schools or Iaijutsu schools actually do that, draw and go to cut, or do they draw and cut in the same? Or how many originally did that and the names have changed and everything's been mixed in? So to actually find the answer to that would be a ridiculously difficult thesis for someone to go through all the Iaido schools, Iaijutsu schools, and actually find out the different cut types. And of course those who call themselves Bato Jutsu. So remember, don't misquote me, this is just an idea by the online Japanese community that Bato Jutsu is to draw and cut in the same movement, one movement. Iai Jutsu is to draw, adjust and cut. That's some people's theory. So I want to talk, obviously, uh, one of my quotes in our last video sparked, sparked a bit of debate and that is like, you know, Iaido is a little bit become redundant and useless uh, for a physical deadly combat art. And my point here is that is about intent. Now what I'm trying to say is Iaido, the idea behind Iaido is to study the way of the sword to clarify, clear the mind and you know all the other stuff with all the adult art. It loses its uh, practicality. And it was brought up in the thread uh, that uh, of course some schools started as Iaijutsu and then they become Iaido but it doesn't mean their skills are redundant just because it's Iaido. I said EI Do is about the mental capacity, you're clearing your mind and it becomes very slow and artistic. Now that doesn't mean if you speed it up and you become aggressive or you become um, you know, mindful that you're actually going to kill someone, it can become useful. So the idea is that you have to be careful. When does a practical art stop being practical? And I say the answer to that question is intent. When you train with the intent that it's a real thing and you're going to kill someone with it and you train not to be perfect, not to be quiet, not to be honest, you literally train to take your sword out and butcher someone, then um, that I would say is useful. When somebody has trained all their life in uh, a very graceful, slow pattern and they don't actually have the ability to draw and strike with speed and move out of someone's attack while they're walking, while they're running, while they're sitting, while they're drinking tea, then it's not useful if they don't have that ability. So it's down to intent. I honestly, honestly think um, in the martial arts world, there is no, this style's better than that style. This, it's all about the intent of the person using it. You can have the greatest techniques in the world, but if somebody's not physically fit, not physically um, good at fighting, not got that killer instinct, not really on the ball with it, don't move well, doesn't matter how good the style is, they're never gonna be able to defend themselves or kill other people with it. So. Again, please don't mistake me or misquote me that Iaido is useful if you turn it into Iaijutsu. Of course, some schools change their name. You, you have to realise, guys, that's not the point. What I was trying to say in the first video is people have responded with exactly what I was saying, don't do. And that you can't say, such and such a school does this, such and such a school says this. That's my point. I don't think they're all correct. I honestly think that the physical skill of taking your sword out of its scabbard very quickly and murdering another human being has been lost in the Koryu society. That's what I'm trying to say. I think the one of the, not saying there's no one, I'm saying of course there are some examples. Like for example, Kono, he is, even he is like, no, this is not right, this is too slow, too elegant, too nice. It's get your sword out and murder someone. Because we have one question at the top of everything. One simple question is, does this work? In ancient times, I'm talking in the Edo period or the Sengoku period, did it work? If you transport through time, if you take, if you go and study Iaido now and you're very, very, very beautiful and you take it out and you're very slow and elegant, can you then transport yourself to Sengoku period or Edo period and somebody attacks you to kill you? I'm talking to butcher you with a knife or to butcher you with a big, big sword. Do you have the physical ability to draw it quickly and kill someone? It doesn't matter if you're black, Chinese, American, English, Japanese, the sword doesn't care. If it hits you, you die. So the idea is, can you physically make it work? If you can, then it's useless. If you can, it's useful. So it's down to intent. So please don't get stuck in the idea of like, this school, school says this, my master says this, their master says that. They have never killed anyone with that sword. And they have never defended from an, a street attack of a samurai jumping out and trying to murder them. 
That's the point. We have to remember that. What does it mean to us today? Iaido, what does it mean today? Uh, Iaijutsu, what does it mean today? And what did it mean then? What did it actually mean? So the only way to actually answer this question, and remember I'm not asking for answers, I'm not giving answers. I'm making this video so that the samurai community online can say, hold on, let's have a discussion about this, let's talk about this, what can we discover from this? And the end result is that you have to discover, can you wear a sword at your side? Can you draw and attack someone from multiple directions in a very, very quick movement to defend yourself? Can you do that? The answer is either yes or it's no. Remember that, it's either you can or you cannot. So that's the only question. So going down the roots of this school says that, it's just not really realistic. If you're walking down as a samurai in old medieval Japan and you don't want to die, you have to have the intent and the ability to defend yourself with very fast and possibly scruffy movements that will kill the opponent. They don't have to be beautiful, they have to be practical. So my big issue with the samurai enthusiast community is that people put uh, essence on beauty as opposed to practicality. We have to remember practicality is what saves your life. If you can be practical and you can kill someone very quickly with a sword, you then make it beautiful, then you become a master of extreme ability and all that. So I hope that helps. Uh, of course, remember, the information I give you is simply done by a Japanese person reading Japanese um, web blogs and this blog and video blogs and Yahoo Answers and, and the general samurai online community in Japan in Japanese. They have translated to me. It was only two hours ago I was speaking to them on Skype and they were right, I was writing it all out and you're getting it now on YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm happy that it's creating some debate. Please carry on with the debate. Have a chat about it and uh, see what points you think are right, see what points you think are wrong and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget the new book is out in June.